It's been a while since I've done a KiCad video in specific. I did a video a while back on the project structure that we use for work. And over the last, I guess, six months or so, we've kind of completely changed the way that we handle libraries. So this video, it's not gonna be a tutorial because I definitely don't have the best way to do this. I'm just gonna kind of go over an example project and how we treat it. And definitely there's, I know, room for improvement. So if you have any feedback on it, definitely let me know. And I use Paid Library Manager for the footprints. It's not cheap but it is honestly like the best money you can spend because it is CAD data agnostic. So basically the footprints that we have made in there, which is hundreds of them now, if we decide to ever stop using KiCad or use another software, we can output those files to whatever we want. So it's definitely worth the investment if nothing else just for that. So like I said, I'm just gonna go through kind of an example project and we'll talk through how it kind of works. So the first thing I do before starting any project, I showed this in the last video. I used this text to folders tool, which is really nice. It lets you choose a template that you want your files to be in and then you can output the format that you want. So you select your template folder, which for me, I have it set up so my structure looks like this, and then you set where you want the folder to be, the folders to be created, and then you hit create. So now in this folder, we have the full structure of everything in here. The assembly outputs, that's where all my assembly outputs go, bill of materials here, data sheets, the outputs that go to the fab house, any 3D renders typically. This is where all of the project files are held. This is where the local footprints are and then any PDF outputs typically for a schematic go in there. So now we have our KiCad project created in here and we can open that up. So now for our schematic, basically the way that we do this is we use a global symbol library, but a project local footprint library. And the reason I went with that is basically your symbols, no matter what happens, there's not ever gonna be a change that you would make to your global library that will affect a project that references that symbol. Because any changes you make to a symbol, if you're fixing an error, for example, it's gonna need to be fixed on the others. Whereas footprints, depending on if you have it a dense board to where you kind of make the lands a little bit smaller or you have a bigger thermal pad, those can vary depending on the project. And that library manager I use for the footprints let you adjust how big and small each pad is. So that, I definitely like having that local, but the symbols, I think the best approach is to have them global. So if we want to have, say, an Arduino be the base of this project, I would grab that from our global symbol. So we go to an at mega like this. So basically the way that I have our global library set up is they have a name of the folder that ends in like an S and I keep it lowercase throughout to distinguish it from KiCads. So all of the resistors that I have are in the resistors. The regulators are in the regulators. MISC is miscellaneous stuff all throughout here. And the big thing that I do is I map the value one to one to a specific part number that that part corresponds to. So when generating the bill of materials, this part right here corresponds exactly to a manufacturer's part number so it makes it really easy to generate a bill of materials. The ID is then just the base part number, and that's the only thing that gets shown. So you don't see the full drawn out part number, you just see the more human readable number like that. One field we need to add in the future is like a manufacturer's, uh, who's the manufacturer, because unfortunately sometimes you do have unique part numbers which end up not being unique. There's our base part, and now say we wanna add our five volt net to it and ground. 
And then this project is gonna be super simple. So we'll just go to our capacitors and add a decoupling cap. We need to have a 10K pull up on our reset line to make sure it doesn't accidentally reset. And then that's what I'll keep it for now. Of course, this would need to have a way to program it and a bunch of stuff, but I just wanna have a few parts on here. One other thing that is really nice with KiCad that took me a minute to realize is the way that it handles searching. So let's go back to say that 10K resistor. When you go to the fields of it, you can have a descriptions and a keyword section. All I do for this when I make a new part is I copy the detailed description from DigiKey. So now if I go to search for any of these keywords, it shows up on my search. So if I wanna find just a 10th watt or 0.1 watt resistors, I can just search one tenth watt and it gives all 10th watt resistors. Or if I wanna search for 0603, it'll give me all parts on here that are 0603s. And because KiCad standard libraries don't map it to individual parts like I do, it doesn't show any of theirs. So there's a lot of cool ways that you can limit this by using the detailed description. I use DigiKey just because they have pretty nice ones, but of course you could use anyone anyone else. So that's how the global library is. Now let's say we need to make the physical parts for this. This is where I use the PCB, it's called Library Expert Pro. I have the Enterprise Edition, not Pro. They have a free version that works great, but you can't actually save it into the footprint library like I have all these parts which is fine for individual projects but if you're doing a lot of stuff like like we have to do it pays for itself like the first time being able to store all of these so I have a section in here which has a chip 0603 and a chip 0805 and something they added actually after I requested it a little while ago is the ability to adjust the rotation so what we do is have all of the footprints and that's what these custom fields are is all of the footprint rotations match how they come off a of tape and reel so when we import our files into our assembly line, we don't have to adjust any rotations, which if you know anything about setting up a line, that is a very time consuming and error prone step. So with this, it gives us the ability not to have to worry about that. So we would just go to whichever parts we need, which for this is the chip 0603, and then we will export that to the lib.fp.pretty tab. And what I do is it also outputs a step file, which is really nice and I export both of them to the same location. So I export the 0603, and then also export the 0805. Next, we need to find and add the at mega, and other than for passive parts, I also match the footprint name one to one to a part number. And this, I'm not gonna go into how I make the parts with uh, the Library Expert Pro, if you want to see that, let me know. I don't know how many of you guys are actually using it. If that would be something you'd like to see, just let me know. So now we have all of the parts set up from Library Expert that we need. So now we can go and match the parts together after we annotate them, of course. So now I go to the local lib FP and I just use a path substitution to have it find that. So for the C1, we do the 805-0603 and then the at mega and save that. Now we can go to the PCB editor and import all of our parts. Now, one of the big things that I don't like about my setup, and I don't know if there's a possible way to fix this, since it's a local library, I have to edit that part in the local library to add the 3D footprint to it. So basically I have to go to where my library is and add the step file and then it's usually the way that uh, the library expert exports them it's just a negative 90 rotation and then if we look at the 3d viewer it shows that 3d part so it's really not a big deal but it's something that would be nice if i didn't have to do that so speaking of the disadvantages is there some parts especially like custom connectors that library expert pro isn't good at making 
so I still have to make them within KiCad. The disadvantage of that is I also have to have a separate footprint library that just has the random parts that I don't use the Library Expert Pro for. It's not a big deal because there's not many of those parts, maybe one every couple projects, but it's something that's annoying. But other than that, this system works pretty well because again, we have the ability to have all of our symbols in a single place mapped one-to-one -to, -one to a manufacturer's part number, which makes bill of materials creation really easy. And then our footprints are mapped one-to-one -one still with the manufacturer's number, but they are done locally. So if we have to change something with a footprint, it doesn't change all of the projects we've done in the past which is really nice. I've mentioned this several times. The reason I don't use or we don't use any default KiCad parts that come with it, it's not that I don't think that they're good. A lot of them are. I just don't feel comfortable taking the risk of having a board that we designed for a client, having to redo that entire board just because a part that we used we didn't make it ourselves and didn't have the ability or didn't spend the time to double check it. The fact that we make every footprint and symbol internally, at least if something happens, it's our fault and it was something that we had control over. So that pretty much summarizes our current uh, project setup. I'm sure it'll change in the next however long when KiCad 6 comes out. I know that they're talking about a lot of changes, but definitely let me know if you have any suggestions on anything that you see that we could improve on. And I hope that maybe this gave you some ideas of something that you guys could use in the future as well. I'll have in the description all the software that I use. Definitely check them out and let me know of any suggestions you have for future videos. And I will see you in the next one.